Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about principles five and six, which are feeling your fullness and discovering the satisfaction factor. So principle five, which is feeling your fullness. First and foremost, this is a critical point, but when you know that you have unconditional permission to eat. So this is not a restriction. This is not starving yourself prematurely stopping because you think you should be full, none of that. It's an amazing tool to know that you can stop eating because you know that you can eat any of those foods at any time. So how do you know if you're even at a comfortable satiety level, right? It could be subtle feelings of fullness. When you feel satisfied and content, like you're just happy, you're done. Or it could be you're neither full nor hungry, you just kind of are. Um, keep in mind that these are highly individualized for the person. So just because your friend may feel this way, you may have to eat until you feel this way. So there's no need to compare anybody else's journey to yours. It's all individual. So how do you exactly feel your fullness, right? So a good little tip is to stop eating in the middle of your meal and ask yourself how you're feeling and how the food tastes. Um, a lot of times if you are over hungry, you aren't even gonna give yourself the chance to stop in the middle and actually ask yourself, how does this food taste? And you're just gonna eat and all of a sudden you're gonna be done and be like. <laughs> One, I didn't even taste that because I was so hungry. And two, you're gonna be at a point where you're so stuffed now that you went from being so uncomfortably hungry, now you're uncomfortably full. So we're trying to find that happy ground, right? When you know you can eat the food again, it's so much easier to leave food behind because there's no feeling of deprivation or starvation or knowing that you can't have it. Like if you're dieting and you give yourself a cheat meal, you feel the need to eat every single piece of French fry there is there because you know that you won't get that again, right? So if you, are becoming an intuitive eater you know that you can have any of these foods at any time so it's so easy to just say like oh no I'm, I'm good on that you know because you can have it literally in five minutes if you change your mind if all of a sudden you decide you want it cool eat it so a lot of us were raised where we were taught to clean our plates right to eat everything our parents gave us the problem with this is we're not taught to listen to our body signals and respect what our body is telling us we're only taught to clean and eat every single thing on our plate, which makes it very difficult to respect your fullness and honor yourself when you're telling yourself you're full and leaving a couple bites of that burger on your plate because everybody's always told you that you have to finish everything. So give yourself time, be patient with yourself. It's not a streamlined process. There are gonna be ups, there are gonna be downs. It's a journey, but just knowing that you don't have to eat everything if you don't want to, is amazing. So just pause in the middle of your eating, right? Ask yourself, how is this food tasting? How hungry am I? Am I satisfied right now? Do I wanna keep eating? And the more you become in tune with your own hunger signals and the more you do this and check in with yourself, the easier it's gonna be to know whether you wanna keep eating or whether you wanna stop. But know that just because you're stopping to check in with yourself does not mean you have to stop eating. Even if you are full, a lot of people choose to overeat because they're enjoying the food. It's important to know that in all of this intuitive eating stuff, the most important thing is how the food tastes to you. So if you're loving it, even though you know you're gonna be full, it's okay to eat it. If you're on vacation and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get these kinds of foods again, it's okay to keep eating that. Like, this isn't like, oh, I'm full, I have to stop. It's merely checking in with your body and seeing how you're doing and stopping when you feel satisfied and full. So the last point before we get into principle six is increasing your consciousness while you're eating. So a lot of us tend to eat in front of a TV or while we're reading or anything like that and try to, and I know that this is completely, it's very difficult to do this, um, increasing consciousness when you're eating will help you tune back in it actually helps you taste the food better i've noticed that if i'm watching something i'm literally not paying attention to what i'm eating and i'm just wanting something to do and i'm not actually tasting the food and that's that's sucky right you want to actually like taste what you're eating um so give yourself permission to eat somewhere that's calm and relaxing in clothes that you're comfortable in 
without distraction and just enjoy the food and savor every single bite that you're eating. I know that we're not always given this privilege of getting to eat in like this quiet and serene place, but just when you have that opportunity to do that for yourself, I highly recommend it. So on to principle six, which is discovering the satisfaction factor. Say that five times fast. <laughs> so like I stated a couple minutes ago, how taste is the most important, literally the satisfaction factor is the driving force behind intuitive eating. You want to feel satisfied, otherwise you're just gonna keep scrounging around for other foods, eating all these extra calories when none of them are actually satisfying you and you're just eating to eat. The main premise of this is to feel satisfied would be eating a steak when you want a steak. You know, if you go out to a restaurant and you're craving steak and you get a salad instead, you're not gonna be satisfied, right? You're gonna hope and pray that you are. So like in today's day when we see like these keto cookies or like people making brownie batter um, or mug cakes out of their protein powder, I'm sure it tastes eh, maybe okay. I don't know, protein's gross but it's not actually satisfying anything, right? It's merely this person has a sweet tooth, they don't want to cave and actually give themselves a cookie or something. So what do they do? They take the ingredients that they have, which is protein powder, and make something out of it to tell themselves that it tastes good. It doesn't. If you just allow yourself to eat a brownie every once in a while or every day if that's what you want, you're gonna be more satisfied because you're actually giving into what you want. The problem is, is when we're not giving into our cravings, it makes us crave it even more. So then when we do have that food that we're craving in front of us, we can't just eat one. We have to eat five or six or seven, you know? So if you eat appealing food um, when you're not really hungry, you're not really gonna be satisfied. And conversely, if you eat food when you're starving, your taste buds don't even have a chance to catch up to what you're eating. You're just gonna be so hungry and you're just eating, eating, eating because you're at least honoring your hunger at that point, right? You're eating because you're hungry, but you're not actually tasting the food. And so you're not gonna be satisfied. You're just gonna like be coming out of this black hole of eating and being like, whoa, what just happened? Now I'm stuffed and I'm not even satisfied and it's, it's not fun. So the reason that this principle is coming after rejecting the diet mentality is because if you're still in a diet mode, you're likely not gonna give into the satisfying foods or if you do, you're gonna judge yourself and feel guilty for it. So it could be eating that Pazuki from BJ's or eating a burger from In-N-Out. You're not gonna do that when you're on a diet. So if you're finally off that diet mentality and you actually give yourself a chance to eat these foods, you're probably not gonna crave them all the time and you're not gonna feel the need to eat it all the time. But guess what, when you do, you're actually gonna feel satisfied and not feel the need to keep eating them and keep eating them. So how do you know when you're satisfied, right? Or how do you know that the food you're gonna be eating is going to be what's satisfying to you? So when discovering the satisfaction factor, there are actually five little tips to take with you. And mind you, none of this is perfect. These are just little pointers and tips that you can take with you. So before you eat, ask yourself, what are you in the mood for? What sounds good to you? With no judgment, nothing, just what food sounds good? Number two would be discovering the pleasure of your palate, right? There's taste, texture, appearance, how does the food smell? The temperature of the food, all of these go into discovering your palate. If you're eating pasta, I'm gonna assume you probably don't want it cold, right? So that's not gonna satisfy you either. You wanna eat this warm, nice, inviting pasta with this Parmesan cheese on it so that it's all melted. That to me tastes like it's gonna be a lot more satisfying than something that just came out of the fridge. Yeah, it's the same food, but the way you're eating it also isn't gonna really be good. Number three would be to make your eating experience as pleasurable as possible. So that would be the three S's of satisfaction, which are eat slowly, eat sensually, and to savor every bite. Number four is to don't settle. Obviously it would be an extreme privilege to be able to eat whatever you want, whenever you're wanting it. Um, but we don't, I would say nine out of 10 of us don't live in a world where we can um, tell our private chef, hey, I want this made and they make it all the time. So at the same time though, you don't have to sit there and settle for foods that you don't wanna eat and you know aren't gonna satisfy you. If you're not loving it, don't eat it. And if you are loving it, just savor every single bite. Number five would be to check in and make sure that the food's still tasting good. You know, sometimes 
the first bite or usually if you're gonna have a whole pint of ice cream i can guarantee you the first bite tastes so much better than the last bite so just kind of as you're eating just go along and ask yourself like how does it taste let's rate it scale of one to ten. Oh, first bite's a 10 it's so good it's amazing 10th bite okay it's an eight it's still really good i'm still enjoying this maybe by the 30th bite you're kind of like eh, i'm at a three like i'm kind of over it and i can kind of stop eating so the more you're checking in with yourself and giving yourself credit and honoring your body the easier this whole process is going to be to get back to our roots to become an, a true intuitive eater so that is all i have for you guys today i hope you enjoyed this video um, and I hope you learned something. Make sure you tune in next week when we go over principles seven and eight, which are how to cope with your emotions without using food and respecting your body. So you will not want to miss it. Make sure you tune in and I'll see you guys next time.